Hi, I'm Sarah and welcome to Rich Textures Crochet on YouTube. Let's crochet something beautiful today. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the Windy Pines slouch hat. And uh, that is this hat right here. It's a fairly easy hat to make. It has quite a bit of texture, but once we get started you will see just how easy this texture is. It's a great slouch hat. It is made with this Karen Pantone yarn. Of course you can use any bulky weight yarn of your choice, but the one that I've made it with today is with the Karen Pantone yarn, which is a wool blend yarn. Uh, it's quite soft very smooth. So that's the yarn we're going to be working with today. For this pattern you are going to need two skeins of this yarn but you will not use all of it. Actually of the second skein you're only going to need to use one of the colors and I've used the extra cream color from my skein. Uh, each skein has about 23 yards per small ball and I'll show you what I mean by small ball. Uh, so if you're looking to uh, substitute this with another type of yarn, you're going to need the total 127 yards of the full one plus another 23 yards for your hat. Okay. For this pattern you will also need an 8 millimeter crochet hook. You will also need a measuring tape because that is how you're going to determine the size of your brim. And then as well you'll need a yarn needle for weaving in your ends. The full written pattern for the Windy Pines slouch hat can be found for free on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com and I'll place the links here for you in the notes of this video. Now that we have everything we need all gathered together, let's get started. Now when you first approach this skein of Pantone yarn, what you're going to find is you're going to find uh, five little balls of yarn kind of all braided together. So what you're going to do is you're simply going to pull one of those little balls out and you'll see it has a nice little uh, ring here of yarn. Again, it's about 23 yards. You're going to snip the, uh, the little tie here and then you're going to want to ball this mini skein into a smaller ball just to make it easier to work with and keep it from tangling up. So you're going to want to do that for each of your five colors. Once you are all set, and ready to begin, you're going to start by working the brim of this hat. And now in this tutorial, I am going to assume that you already have a basic understanding of crochet, how to do your basic stitches, such as a slip knot and a chain stitch and a single crochet. Uh, some of the more textured stitches, I will demonstrate how to do those here. So for the brim of your hat, it's going to be worked in rows as opposed to a round, which the rest of the hat will be worked. To start, you're going to make your slip knot and using your eight millimeter crochet hook, you're going to chain five chains. That is how you start. Then for row one, you're going to insert your hook in a second chain from your hook and you're going to work one slip stitch. You will then slip stitch in each stitch all the way across. So you will have a total of four slip stitches. That is row one. For row two, you're going to turn and chain one or chain one and turn. And now you are going to proceed by working in the back loop only. The back loop only can be found by when you look at the top of your work, you see these V stitches here. I'm just going to pull up my hook so I can show them to you better. You have these V stitches when you're looking at the top of your work right here. Normally when you work a stitch you're going to insert your hook under both of those strands in the top V. To work in the back loop only, you are only going to be working in the loop that is farthest away from you. 
So that is going to be this strand right back there. So I'm going to insert my hook under that back loop only and I'm going to work a slip stitch. You will repeat for each stitch across. So working in the back loop only, you will have again a total of four slip stitches. Now for the next row and each row following, you are going to simply repeat that. Chain one, turn your work, working in the back loop only, slip stitch in each stitch all the way across. So again, four slip stitches. I will do a couple more rows for you here in the video and then I'll show you my work. And what you're going to end up with is a nice, uh, fairly tight ribbing. I really love the slip stitch when I'm making ribbon. It just ribbing for a hat or for mitts. Uh, it just makes it nice and tight. I feel like it gives it a little bit more stretch, um, but a stretch that will hold its shape better than if I was doing it with uh, single crochets or half double crochets. So I'll just do one more row and then I'll show you what it looks like. like that. So if you take a look, you can kind of pull it apart. You have your stretch here. You can see the ribbing is starting to form. You'll have this raised texture in rows and this is going to form the brim of your hat. So you are going to repeat that row until your work from the beginning measures approximately 18 inches. Or if you want your hat to be a little bit larger or smaller, you're going to work your ribbing until it's the size that you desire. For the hat and the pattern that I'm working now, I've worked it to about 18 inches. Complete that and then meet me back here and I'll show you how to join. Okay, so this is the ribbing on my hat. You can see it has quite a bit of stretch. It's quite nice, but it's going to hold its shape partly because of the blend of the yarn that you have here. And then as well, I feel that slip stitch knitting, just uh, crochet, sorry, just makes it a little bit snugger. Once you have your 18 inches, you're going to fold the brim of your hat in half. Make sure that it is not twisted. You want your pieces to be length flat against one another. You're then going to take the two ends and you're going to work a slip stitch across working through both thicknesses. And you're going to pick up the material in the back loop on each side. So this is my working one over here. I'm just going to put my yarn on the right side. Make sure my brim is not twisted. And I'm working through both thicknesses, work a slip stitch in each stitch all the way across in the back loop only. So this is my back loop on the front piece. I will pick up the back loop on the other side and complete my slip stitch. I'm going to do that all the way across so there's a total of four stitches. There's one, do the same right here. Back loop only, two, three, and one more, and I can see my stitches were a little bit tight here. You will find with this yarn that it does like to split, unfortunately. But once you get used to it splitting and working with it so that it doesn't split, it is a lovely yarn to work with. So again, my back loop. And join. So once you have your four slip stitches, you will see that your pieces are securely joined. You're going to leave your yarn attached, do not fasten off. Turn it right side out so that the right side is now facing you. you should, your seam should be on the inside and you're going to chain one. Now we are going to begin working in rounds and we're going to work around the brim of the, the long edge of the brim of our hat. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're, we've chained one, and then we are going to work 64 half double crochet stitches all the way around. Now because there are no holes or no uh, stitches really to insert your hook in, you're just going to kind of make it up. If it helps, you can mark the halfway point and then you know that you want to have 32 stitches on either side of that halfway point. It might help to keep your stitches even. But you're simply going to work 30, uh, 64 half double crochet stitches all the way around. When I'm working into the brims of my hat, because I like to have it a little bit uh, a little bit tight and I don't want to have any gaps, I usually like to put my hook down a couple of strands more into uh, about a third of the way down my brim or a quarter of the way down. And I'll work my stitch there so that I don't have any gaps or openings. So work 64 half double crochet stitches all the way around. When you come back to your first stitch, you are going to join in the top of that stitch with a slip stitch. Okay, so once you have your 64 half double crochets worked all the way around, you are going to join with a slip stitch in that first half double crochet stitch. Now for round two, we are going not going to turn. You're always going to be working in the same direction, so do not turn at the end of your rounds. For round two, you're going to chain one, and we are now going to half double crochet in the third loop in each stitch all the way around. So the third loop is a little bit different from working in the back loop. The third loop can be found on your half double crochet stitches by pulling your work forward. So the third loop is actually in the back of your stitch. So this is the front of my work. When I pull my work forward so that I'm looking at the back, when I look at the half double crochet stitch, I'm going to see this top horizontal bar and I'm going to see another horizontal bar underneath of it there. Okay, this horizontal bar that runs underneath the top one, that is your third loop. And each stitch, each half double crochet stitch will have a third loop. So you've chained one, you're looking at the back of your loop, you see this second horizontal bar, you're going to work one half double crochet stitch in it. So yarn over, insert your hook under that third loop only, and then complete your stitch. And you're going to repeat that all the way around. So yarn over, half double crochet under that third loop, continue all the way around. And what you're going to see is that it's going to push the tops of your stitches forward to kind of give it a little bit of a knit look. So you'll have a ridge down the front or around the front of your hat. So working the third loop all the way around. Now working with this Pantone yarn, you are going to find that eventually, like I am here, I am running to the end of my first little ball. So you'll remember it was only 23 yards, so you're going to go through them pretty quick once you get going because it's a fast hat to make. So right now I'm going to show you how I like to join uh, the new ball or new color and this is what you can do for any project any time where you are trying to join a new ball of yarn or a new color. The next color I am going to use is my light green. So I have it on here ready. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start my half double crochet stitch. I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook, and I'll pull up a loop so I have three loops left. Now, instead of completing that stitch with this remaining piece I have left, I'm going to pick up my new skein. I'm going to yarn over. I'm just going to loop it over the top of my hook. I'm going to make sure that I have an ample tail left over. 
and I'm going to pull that new color through to complete the stitch. Then what you'll probably have to do is just to pull both colors a little bit tight just to bring that stitch in a little bit further. And now my new color is joined and I can continue working with it. I'll show you how to do that one more time. So this is to join a new ball of yarn or a new color. What I'm going to do when I have a little bit left is I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to start the stitch. Insert my hook and draw up a loop. Now instead of finishing with this little bit that I have left, I'm going to pick up my new color, I'm going to yarn over, and I'm going to draw that new color through to complete my stitch. This way, in your work, you will not have any knots. You'll just have a flawless, uh, smooth transition into your next color. Pull those two a little bit tight to bring your stitch in a little bit more. And then you're all set to go with the new color. So then I'm just going to continue on working in my third loop. Yarn over, insert my hook. Now I also like to work over top of those colors a little bit, the two short ends, just to kind of keep them in so I don't have to weave them in later. But I'm still only working in that third loop. And you can see when you look at the front of my work here, you can see that smooth transition from one stitch to the next. So now I'm just going to continue working all the way around. So at the end of this round you will have 64 half double crochet stitches once again worked all in the third loop all the way around. When you get back to the beginning you are going to join with a slip stitch in the top of the first stitch. Okay, so I'm just completing my last half double crochet in the third loop for round two. Then I'm going to join with a slip stitch in the top of that first stitch. Just like that. So now this is what your work will look like. For round three, you're going to chain one. Again, do not turn your work. We're going to chain one and now we're going to start working some of that texture there that you saw in the hat. To make that texture you're going to single crochet in the first stitch so that's the stitch where you joined and then you're going to work a triple crochet in the next stitch. To triple crochet you're going to yarn over twice, insert your hook in the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through three times and you will have a triple crochet. Next, you're going to kind of push that triple crochet forward and you're going to single crochet in the next stitch. It's important that you push that triple crochet forward a little bit so that you have your texture on the front of your hat. Okay, so single crochet in the next stitch and now you're going to repeat triple crochet in the next stitch and single crochet in the next. You're going to continue that all the way around. Each time you work your triple crochet, remember to push it to the front when you work your next single crochet and that will push it forward a little bit. It gives you a bit of a faux popcorn look. Triple crochet, single crochet. You're going to complete that all the way around. When you come back to your first stitch, you're going to join in the top of that stitch with a slip stitch. Your final stitch in round three is going to be a triple crochet stitch. And then you're going to join with a slip stitch in the top of your first single crochet stitch. 
And you should see all the way around you have your nice triple stitches. They're coming out there with some great texture. Just push them forward if they seem to be hesitant. Now for round four, you're going to chain one again, do not turn. And you're going to work a half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. So starting with your first joining stitch, work a half double crochet in the top of each triple and each single crochet stitch all the way around. Again, you will have 64 half double crochet stitches. When you come back to your first stitch, you're going to join in the top with a slip stitch. At the end of round four, you're going to join in the top with a slip stitch and you'll be ready to begin round five. For round five, you're going to chain one and once again, you're going to be working in the third loop. So you're going to pull your work forward so you're looking at the back and on the back of your work, you'll see that lower horizontal bar. So you have your top one and then you have your one underneath of it. You're going to work one half double crochet in each of those stitches all the way around your work. So half double crochet in the third loop all the way around. Then once again when you come back you're going to join with a slip stitch in the top of your stitch. Now for the rest of your hat, once you have completed round five, these half double crochets in the third loop, for the rest of your hat you are simply going to repeat rounds three through to five. So after this round five, round three was your triple crochet, single crochet uh, pattern all the way around. Then you're going to repeat round four, which is your half double crochet in the top of each stitch. And then you'll repeat your round five, which is the half double crochet in the third loop all the way around. So you are going to repeat that round three through to five for a total of three times more. So this will be rounds six through to 14. Once you have completed round 14, you will be all set to begin your decrease rounds. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Okay, so now I've repeated uh, ra rounds uh, three to five, three more times. So this is what my work looks like. This is the bottom of my hat. And then I have up to here, and you can see I've started join. I've joined already my uh, dark color. Um, I used both of the small balls to fill in the lighter color, and then uh, I'm now starting my darkest here. Okay, so once you have come around and you have uh, repeated round five, which is that half double crochet in the third loop all the way around. Once you have completed that, you're going to join with a slip stitch in the top of the stitch and you're going to chain one. The decrease rounds are worked all in single crochet stitches and single crochet two together stitches. So for round 15 you're going to single crochet in each of the next two stitches or six stitches and then you're going to single crochet two together and you're going to repeat that all the way around your hat. So first you're going to single crochet in each of the first six stitches. Four, five, and six. Then you will single crochet two stitches together. To single crochet two stitches together, you're going to insert your hook in the first stitch and draw up a loop. You will then insert your hook in the next stitch and draw up another loop. You will have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. This is going to decrease your stitches. You had two and you've basically made, turned it into one stitch. Okay, that is your single crochet two together. You're then going to repeat six single crochet stitches. Two, three, four, five, and six, and single crochet two stitches together. Insert your hook in the next stitch and drop a loop. 
insert your hook in the next stitch and drop another loop yarn over and pull through all three loops and then once again repeat six one single crochet in each of the next six stitches and single crochet two together so you're going to repeat that all the way around when you come back to the beginning you will join with a slip stitch in that first stitch for round 16 you're going to chain one and you're now going to single crochet in each of the first five stitches and then single crochet the next two stitches together. Single crochet in each of the next five stitches. And single crochet two stitches together. Once again, repeat that all the way around till you come to the beginning and join with a slip stitch in the top. Now for round 17, you're going to chain one. You're going to single crochet in each of the next four stitches. And then you're going to single crochet two together. Single crochet in the next four stitches. and single crochet the next two together. Repeat that all the way around and then join with a slip stitch in the top of your first stitch. For round 18 you're going to chain one and by now you'll probably have noticed a pattern. You're going to single crochet in each of the next three stitches. And single crochet two stitches together. Single crochet in each of the next three stitches. And single crochet two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around and then you will join with a slip stitch in that first stitch. Now for round 19, you've probably guessed it, you're going to single crochet in each of the next two stitches and then single crochet two together. Single crochet in the next two stitches and single crochet two together. Once again, repeat that all the way around and join with a slip stitch in your first stitch. For round 20, you're going to single crochet in the next stitch and then single crochet two together. Single crochet in the next stitch and then single crochet two stitches together. Once again, continue that all the way around and then join with a slip stitch in your first stitch. For round 21, you are going to chain one and single crochet two stitches together all the way around. And you're actually going to repeat this for two rounds. So single crochet two stitches together all the way around and then repeat that for round 21 or 22. Once you finish that round 22, so 21 and 22, you've single crocheted two stitches together all the way around. Once you have done that, you'll have four stitches in that final round. You're going to join with your slip stitch in the first stitch and you're going to fasten off, leaving a long end. Okay, so I've just left a little bit of a tail. Now, what I am going to do once I find my yarn 
needle here is you have a long tail and you have the top of your hat well, which, which will look something like this. You're going to thread your long end through your yarn needle and now you're going to sew the top of your hat closed. Before I sew the top of my hat closed, I like to just turn it inside out. Because that way if there is any seam, the seam will turn up on the wrong end. So I'm just pulling my yarn through here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to weave my yarn in and out all the way around that top round of stitches. So I'm just weaving it in and out all the way around. Once you have woven all the way around, I just pull it closed just like that. So now the top is closed. I'm then going to just work a little bit of a knot uh, because I want the top of my hat to be fairly secure. And this yarn again is quite slippery. So I found that I did have to have a good solid knot there, just a small one up at the top of my hat to keep the yarn from pulling out. Once I've made my knot and I know that the top is secure, I finally just wove the rest of my end in through some of the stitches just to kind of nicely tuck it in. Once you feel that you have woven it in well enough, the top of your hat is nice and secure, you will take your yarn scissors, you will cut that long tail off, and any other ends that might be there on the inside of your hat, weave them all in, and then your hat is complete. Congratulations. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you enjoy this Windy Pines slouch hat. Uh, it was a very quick, easy, fun project to do. Thank you so much for watching this video tutorial. Please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out the link for the free pattern in the notes below. Happy crocheting! Bye!